Hey, I feel like I got a really good pulse on underground rap. I don't get this one at all, dog. I ain't got a clue how Mickey Diamond ain't one of the biggest names in underground rap, given how talented he is. Dudes in that 90s East Coast influence, neo mafioso lane of hip hop. If none of them phrases mean anything to you, he's Griselda adjacent. But skill wise, he at least belonged in the conversation with guys like a Bodie James or a Rome Street. He ain't got the influence of a West Side Gun or a Benny the Butcher yet. But bar for bar, he can easily go toe for toe with those guys and he offers something a little bit different from them. For starters, Mickey work ethic is just OD. Like this is four project of the year. I think he got about 10 projects in the last 12 months. I really think bruh just be turning on his TV on a random Saturday and like, dang, ain't no basketball on? I guess I'll drop an album. But besides that, he got an elite pen, great lyricism. He's a super witty puncher and he can hit you with him back to back. But I think where he's most brilliant at is when he comes to concept albums. Bruh has this style where he'll give you the braggadocious street talk that's kind of synonymous with his lane of hip hop, but he'll do it from the perspective of like a fictional character. For example, he rapped from the perspective of Ric Flair on his Nobody Bleeds Like Flair album last year. Looks like he might be doing the same, but from the perspective of Shredder for Ninja Turtles on this one. Let's see what it's hitting on. Detroit, Michigan. Did somebody say slime? Free YSL? It's a super Another homicide, bona fide villain with the chrome mask. Come on, bruh. Come on, bruh. You ain't got to do it like that. This be tough. Uh-huh. Tell me where Oh, I thought that's part of the music <laughs> 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 I want to say, you going to change up the ad lib game with that. He really in character. Another homicide, bona fide villain with the crow mask. I'm going to stop chain spilling sake out of gold flask. Come on, man. He rapping, man. He used only a two-syllable rhyme scheme at the end with that gold flask rhyme scheme, but he got an Amistad internal rhyme scheme going on. Amistad, homicide, and one other thing he said on the internal, the first part of the bar. Don't smash mad colors flashing with the chrome mask. Dimension X is where your soul's cast it. Flash flow oh. trash can clash with a titan. Swing the sword on demand, all the fans get excited. Man, he used that ass sound as alliteration there. He already getting that Shredder character where his bars already having those untungers where he could be talking about himself, he could be talking about Shredder. But when he said like the chrome flash, of course chrome can be a gun, but Shredder had a little chrome dagger, whatever you call it, little Wolverine claws, what he could be referring to as an untundra. And then he's mixing in like the gun lines, but also with the sword lines, because that's what they use in the Ninja Turtles. I already see what it's going. It's going to be like... Ninja Turtles go to Compton. Big dagger, make a pussy rap a straight. <laughs> like That's bloody, blow racks or rings. That's so fire. <laughs> so fire. That bar is crazy. That bar is crazy. He said make rappers menstruate. And then he said pull triggers like tampon strings. And then he said leave your pad all bloody. Leave your house all bloody. Leave your pad all bloody. So he had the whole menstruate and period scheme playing into the gun lines. That's tough, dog. Nigga, please, I call you bluff. Tough as buddy, leave dungarees. Keep it clean, summer's eve. Turtles and rest. Summer's eve is tough. Turtles and rest, be his pet peeve. Yo, the flow sick is Jeffrey Epstein. Bro, nine yards of Bro, relax, dog. Relax, dog. He punching, punching, man. And he does this so much that you kind of get used to it. Listen to Mickey Diamond, you don't realize how special it is. Lupe really made a name for himself for doing this with these extended metaphors where you'll be rapping about something, but that whole time it has a double meaning for something else. He does this with almost all his concept albums where he'll have a character and he'll rap about himself through the lens of that character. Because all of these lines can either be referring to Shredder, they could be referring to himself. Dog, that's crazy. And then he's not just doing this for one one song I assume I'm assuming he's gonna be doing this for the entire album that's not regular dog like I made their Lupe reference man people made whole websites before genius to break down when Lupe would do these extended metaphors like y'all remember that whole debate when they were talking about is kick push talking about skateboarding or is it talking about selling drugs like that's what's going on right here I mean you know what he's actually talking about but man that's crazy come on dog and then he's had a bunch of nods that MF doing with his album covers. So, so that was an intentional reference. He got like a Super Nintendo scheme right there because Ninja Turtles had a whole bunch of game one like NES and all through the Nintendo console life cycles. He had a shout out to, I think the name of the game is Starship. And then a Mario reference with the Koopa line. You rain on the top with short as a Oompa Loompa. You niggas gonna learn to respect the throne. 
trend doing drop bars in the techno drone that's hard no man, that's hard <laughs> yeah this is that ninja turtles go to compton they a product of the environment doing drop bars in the techno drone the little ship they drove in the ninja turtles that's hard i treat the sewers like my second home Stay tuned to the next episode. The song, I ain't even being dramatic, dog. That's my favorite song of the year. That song is amazing. For one, the beat is crazy. Those spacey, ethereal keys, and then just the simple boom bap beat was hard. It had this grimy feel to it, but then the rapping was nuts, dog. I mean, it had everything that you can want from a verse. It had a fire concept where he was rapping from the perspective of Shredder, but all the lines had a double entendre for just regular street stuff that can go down. But even just the subtle lines, man, it really sounded like Shredder and got in the booth and was really talking that talk. Just a small little lines like the chrome mask when he's talking about only rats and turtles annoy him. And then some of these punches was OD. That whole lead your plaid bloody menstruate, that whole scheme right there, nuts, dog. Those lines right there could carry a verse by itself. And then the lyricism was nuts, man. Mickey really did his thing as far as complexity when it came to his rhyme schemes. I like the different variety. It wasn't just he has a four-syllable rhyme scheme and he said at the beginning of the line then he says at the end of the line then next line he does the same thing and then after four bars he switch it up that he was really clever with how he moved through rhyme schemes he might hit you with a two syllable here and then the internal rhyme scheme is completely different and then he'll take that two syllable and do it back to back to back in the next line and just drop that last internal rhyme scheme he had man it was crazy this song is od if this album sound like this man this thing gonna be special this is shredder loves april I wonder why good girls love bad guys we can cruise through the skies if you feeling what i'm feeling when <laughs> that's hard dog i did not expect this to happen i mean i see the name of the song but i wasn't expecting this i don't think this was a part of ninja turtles the hard part about this album is going to be the fact that i was a kid when i watched ninja turtles so i don't remember all this stuff but i don't think because april was a good guy or i guess gal you gotta specify in today's age so i think there's some alternative universe where shredder and april got together like on some romeo juliet type stuff it's creativity man Dominate the globe. <laughs> <laughs> the techno drone got in me. That's hard. Hey, niggas gonna be niggas regardless if it's in Ninja Turtles or what. Your neck covered up with bruises and hickeys. They sick you let me hit without using the Jimmy. Stick a well long enough, I'll introduce you to Kimmy. Priest Brooklyn and Cash. That's hard, man. This using a Jimmy. Using a Jim. <laughs> I'm, I'm getting rusty, dog. <laughs> I'm getting rusty, but that's a five syllable rhyme scheme, man. That's a tough rhyme scheme. Bask in my love. Nice to meet you. Ain't another little turtle reference with the turtle does line. You wanna learn my love language? I'm a teacher. Put your number in my phone. Was a good time to reach you? Spread your legs wide. Turtle soup. How I eat you? Tonight we die. Red wine. Man, that's so clever, dog. On the album cover, which is really dope in and of itself. I can't remember where that picture comes. It's a spinoff of the MF Doom cover, but there is a painting. I don't know if it was official or not, but one of the singles had an alternate cover to it, and this is a take on that. I think it was Ho... Yeah, it had to be Ho Cakes. It was a spin... This album was a spinoff, the cover art. I don't know if it's official or not for Ho Cakes, but anyway, just to eat you like Turtle Soup got so many layers to it because the Turtle Soup was a like reference to I'll turn the Ninja Turtles in a Turtle Soup, and then that's a metaphor of punch in and of itself come on man she is not but i'm gonna treat it like a dime on a wedding day i'm gonna treat it like the prime off the backboard trying to beat it like lebron <laughs> Come on, man. That all the bad boy beat it like LeBron is fire, dog. All right, you got the obvious punch there. LeBron smacked the shot off the bad boy. But I think it's clever because the previous line, he had something like nine, but I'm going to treat you like a dime. That turns the dime 10 out of 10 into a double entendre for dime like a passing basketball. Man, that's hard, bro. Beat it like LeBron. Sometimes you take your talent to South Beach. Ying to my gang with violence without peace. <laughs> Come on, man. Bro, hold on. What is he about to say? I'm Come on, dog. This man is snapping. The wordplay here is just so intricate. These feel like just regular metaphors, punches off the surface, but they're really like triple entendres. Let me see what he about to say. A 
Mario without beats. It's Come like on. Trying to yeah, dog, dog, dog. He had the LeBron line, then he had the sometimes you got to take your talents to South Beach when from the Cavs to the Miami Heat. That was him turning into the villain, and then April O'Neil turning to the villain by dating Shredder in his alternative reality story. But then he got the like Mario without Peach line, which is another reference to another Nintendo video game. But then it's also an entendre for Mario Chalmers on that Heat team with LeBron. Man, that's crazy. When it lose, every superhero needs a villain. Your friends don't approve that you're agree with MVP. Yeah, man, this is why I don't get it with Mickey Diamond. He got way more talent than a lot of people in this same lame of hip hop who got bigger names than him. I don't get it, bro, because dude is special. I mean, he drop a tape every day. It's cloudy outside, so not every project is on the level of those first two songs. But, dog, nah, this is different. This is different, different. I like this beat again, man. It had that old school 90s R&B vibe to it with that little 90s vintage sounding synth. And then you have some nice sounding keys, too. But once again, you got this extended metaphor. Mickey rapping from the perspective with shredder and then you got a bunch of really clever punches that go beyond just that punch and they have additional layers to them or him starting with that turn you to a dime line to the lebron line to the mario and peach line it feels like he put just a ton of thought into this album which is crazy because when did he have time to put thought in this album he just dropped the album what a couple weeks ago maybe a month ago fire open into the album man this is foot clan party Winners in Miami, spend my time wise, keep my eyes on the prize till I rise in the skies with the guy who decides. Come on, man. <laughs> <laughs> him playing with this eye sound back to back to back like that and then he's using meter as well meter is really one of the more subtle things you can do it's a poetic device this is in a, a whole bunch of old literature well not a whole bunch but anyway it's more than flow it's where you emphasize a particular syllable and not as far as rhyming but if you say the word coffee the cough sound of it is a hard sound and then the fee is a lighter sound coffee coffee so it's where you have a line and you have a particular pattern just with which syllable Levels are getting stressed when Andre 3000 get into his crazy flows. That's what he's utilizing a lot of them on a song like Aquemini with that last with that last classic verse, and that's what he was doing with those lines there. Right, it's been masterful, dog. Been around the world twice. I could be a tour guide. Saw a door shotgun disguised as a hobo. Rap he's still playing with that eye sound. Oh, no. <laughs> I like that. Play with my yo yo. He play with my yo yo. It's tough. Still staying in the character. Serenade the hoes like he can't see in JoJo. Oh, my God. <laughs> I pray for someone like you. Yeah. <laughs> oh, my God. That I, that I finally found you. Okay, <laughs> this means. The fact that he used that and not the real song, dog. <laughs> Let's go. I'll make sure everything remains raw. He sells seashells by the sea. Sure, my name ring bells from Detroit to be more. Jimmy Crack Corn. That's a really good pocket to get in giving this beat, man. That flow right there. 50k in cash, you would think he hit the lotto. Ha, tomato, tomato. $800 for a bottle of Moscato in the club. $800 for Moscato, dog. That's how you know bottle service is a scam, dog. Like the juice you get to mix your cocktails when you get a bottle and Moscato got really close to the same amount of alcohol in it. Driving all the way to Colorado for my drugs and a pair of old lugs. Real full of gold slugs. And a pair of lugs. That's diabolical. It's only one beer left. Rappers put my shit when they get me here death. Welcome to another foot clan extravaganza. Party over here. Put your motherfucking hands up. Look, every time he make a Doom reference on this album, it's going to hit because this album and the Orusaki album, which is the prequel to this album, is a nod to Doom, both with the album covers and how they have all these cartoon samples in it is really mm, food esque, if that makes sense. You walk in, pull your motherfucking pants up. These chains cost a lot like Sir Lance up. Those who want the smoke end up with throat cancer. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna give him a pass on that. I'm gonna give him a pass on that. He could have messed that up bad. A lot like Sir Lance. Sir Lance a lot. <laughs> I would let that one slide, man. It's on the border. It's on the border of fire and trash. <laughs> this is such an unnatural way to break up that name Sir Lance a lot. I'm gonna give him a pass. For right now, because of how far this album is, I think that punch is fire. Look, rap work on the credit system, dog. You say a bunch of terrible lines, I'm gonna just assume the next line is terrible, even if another rapper could get away with it. He got good credit built up. I know he intentionally did that and then just stumbled on a five punch. Execute a moonsault from the top rope. I get in that ass like a nigga drops soap. 
this means war. Nah. <laughs> Make sure everything remains. Nah, what in the cannabis in second round knockout is going on with that line? This means war. I'll make sure everything remains raw. He sells seashells by the sea. Sure. Look, I ain't even got to get in a technical breakdown. This is how you know it's different. He said she sells seashells by the seashore. And it was hard. Come on, dog. <laughs> Come on, bro. What else can I add to that? More braggadocio here. It was less from the perspective of a shredder. It had less of that extended metaphor drenched in the diss song, but it was still hard. I think his rhyme scheme's still amazing. But he got him some really dope flows on here, too. I got into that meter that he used. It was only on one bar, but I still think that's really tough to pull off. More little intricacies in the way that he reads through the rhyme schemes are really dope. I like the beat again, and it's a lot going on, so I don't want to, like, miss some really cool stuff that he's doing, but all these beats, all three of these first beats, clearly want to take on a similar vibe as MF Doom did in mm Food with the sample selection right here. But another smooth sample really early 2000s s the underground sound not like the mainstream bling era type sound but he did a beat reminiscent of that era and he did a really tasteful way i think it's another five song the first song on here it stands out the most but shredder loves april and foot Land party been hard too this is cartoon cartoons what was that probably a sonic boom this is the 10th take now we're gonna finish this even if we have an earthquake he a prophet he already knew about them earthquakes in new york Come on, man. They sampled cartoons to make the beat. I don't know what cartoon this melody is from. The main sample, but then he's adding in all the cartoonish sound effects, too. Just different. That's so ignorant. Me and Crane cooking meth in Dexas last. So he rapping from the perspective of Shredder again. I don't remember exactly who Crane is, but he one of them bad guys in the Foot Clan. And then I think this song is going to be similar to... He had a song called Multiverse on... Orusaki, the prequel to this album where he took a whole bunch of superheroes and had them doing a whole bunch of hood-ish on some Twilight Zone meets gangland type stuff. It looked like he gonna do the same thing with different cartoons here. But yeah, cooking up meth in Dexter's lab. That's ignorant. Yo, my name Johnny Bravo of Protective Sex. Never mind. <laughs> I like that. I like that. The work in the mystery van. Oh man, the Scooby Doo reverence transport to work in a mystery van. Get the cops for fake name, tell them I'm Johnny Bravo. Tommy Jerry got the soft air hard if you want it. Josie got pussy for sale. She charged hourly. Josie and the pussy cats. She got pussy for sale. Bro, what is he on, dog? In jail, he on cowardly. Her Casey Jones got killed by Rock Steady. Betty and Wilma gave head to Ed, Ed, and Nettie. Barney and Fred. Hey man, we all adults now. Get Mickey Diamonds on the Nickelodeon team. The alternate reality cartoon they could make up this would be legendary. Barney and Fred got they pack snatched by Samurai Jack. Word is the kids next door, they supply crack. Space goes, used to move coat, coast to coast. Then he cut it with the fit. Yogi Bear overdose. <laughs> the funny part about this is like the people he's saying, you can picture them doing what he's saying. Like you can see Yogi Bear being a fiend. Them kids in that door was probably trapping in that treehouse. Especially number five. Dang, I'm stereotyping, dog. I'm stereotyping. That wasn't good. But it makes sense though, don't it? I knew you was a cop. Push this nigga top back. Everybody freeze. Oh shit, it's the SWAT cats. He used the names to play into what he's about to say. Quick Draw McGraw obviously got the undertone of he got the gun on him. Masterful writing, dog. Love how I paint these animated catastrophes. Me and Brown do back with another masterpiece. Dog, come on, man. I think of the Oroku Saki album. Look, I didn't pronounce that album like five different times on this video one of them gotta be right but my favorite song on that album was multiverse just because i'd like how creative it was that would probably be the case here if that first song wasn't so nuts but if track one was a 10 out of 10 I don't know how this saying as well, man. This song is crazy, man. What's also crazy is I didn't expect to have so many Lupe Fiasco comparisons with Mickey Diamonds. I mean, Lupe is known for being a lyrical wizard. So that's saying a lot that Mickey Diamonds, who's in a space of rap that kind of gets a criticism for being samey and shallow. And we're giving Mickey Diamonds someone in this lane comparisons to Lupe because there's a song that Lupe had on one of his first mixtapes called Twilight Zone, which ironic enough, because I said that this song was like Twilight Zone. But in 
that Lupe song, he did pretty much the same thing using just different items that you will find in the hood. And it's such a creative concept. And Mickey Diamonds pulled it off again here to perfection for the second time. The way that he incorporated the names used it is kind of like wordplay. The way that he gave personalities to the different characters that you could kind of see it happening. And then I even like how he separated where he had the early 2000s cartoons in one section of the song, like the first half of the song. And then he moved it to like older and older cartoons, like halfway through. Super eclectic, off the wall beat that I loved a lot. And then the little cartoon sound effects played into it really, really well. This is like as strong as you can start an album. I mean, I think Mickey is an awesome rapper. I was not expecting this. This is Coffee Beans, let's keep it up. Got everybody saying I'm super like Goku. The whole crew known for doing numbers like Sudoku. I think it's the same sample that the famous one beer sample is from. I'm not sure on that, but if so, another nod to mm food. Foot Clan Syndicate, sign my name on your death certificate. I took the price of fame and I tripled it. Oh, I like this modulation right there. Shook the rap game just like okay, that wasn't a modulation. They just went to a different part of the sample, but still hard. Shook the rap game just like it was dice in a crap game. Laser tag, zap, niggas, Max Payne. The fact remains. <laughs> I like the little Max Payne gun reference. Poor underground crowd sprees like John Dillinger. I like Known that. Take over small towns and rob villages. Break factions down to fractions and small energies. <laughs> I like that. I like Test that. I like that. His math teacher would be proud. Break down faction and fractions. I like the rhyme scheme on that by itself. And small energy, small numbers. I like that. That line cook line is tough. Congratulations. I taught you how to master calculations. I'm gonna be the loudest nigga shouting at your graduation. I like that, man. It's so many rappers saying, I'm your father lines. When this is a creator spin on that saying, I'm gonna be the loudest dude shouting at your graduation. Like coffee beans. Boy, that's the realest line he done said on this whole album. I grind like coffee beans. He be in the booth working like Solomon Northrop. He be 12 years of slaving in the booth. God dang. I, I like that song a lot. I don't think it's any disrespect to the song to say that it is my least favorite out of these first five. But that's just because the pace of some of these songs, the urgency of some of these songs appeal to me a lot. I like high energy songs. And this was uh, kind of bring the mood back down a little bit song, pace the album out a little bit. And that's reflected both with this beat, which I think was a dope sample. I'm almost positive that's the same sample that MF Doom used on One Beer. But if not, it still is really reminiscent of that. I like how he played with the different part of the sample like 16 bars into the song and then mickey kind of slowed it down with his delivery definitely didn't let up as far as rhyme schemes and certainly not punches but had more of a slow methodical flow to it he also wasn't as heavy into the splinter double entendre splinter extended metaphor as he was in some of the other songs but man some of these punches was crazy it wasn't always an insane haymaker but the fact that he's just punching back to back is really really dope so that's a fire song man then go ahead and get in the rock steady me Pat Riley, the squad key, he Alright, that's a light line. Rappers claim they feel it when they really from the boondocks. Split it down the middle, then I'm filling up with moon rock. Trade a Makatana for a new clock. 17 yeah, shots. I like that. Call the cops when you see me like Tupac. I like that call the cop when you see Tupac. That's a reference to hit him up. I like when rap reference other rap. Rock beats, make the streets panic. Mickey 93 ill maddie, still at it. Metallic <laughs> pants, get your grill splatted. Eight drops a year and the nigga still spazzing. That's a White fact, shake, dog. big old teeth. Like Trish Stratus, yeah. What's your favorite <laughs> rapper to the test like Prince Al? Talk that wrestling ish. Deep, will niggas do the ERB. I rock with that song, but I will say, I think these last two songs been a cool off from the first four tracks on here, just a little bit. I do love the beat on this thing, man. The keys, that boom bap drums, and the beat, silky dog. But I think he's still rapping at a high level. On this song, I think it was real precise with the lyricism, the rhyme scheme. I just don't think we got as much on Tundra's metaphors as we did on a lot of the other songs on here. Pretty good, but in comparison to this and Coffee Beans, they've been the two lightest ones. Let's get into Mass Man. On the real, all you rap niggas know the deal on the real. Oh, you 
Black niggas know the deal. He's saying all these rat niggas. I don't know if you talk about Master Splinter or Gunner. Appetite for destruction, a killer for the gate. All heroes die, even super villains wear a cape. It's no way you can escape. Not any time. Just super villains wear a cape is fire. They compare my shit to Planet of the Ace. VVS flashing like a camera in your face. Toe hammers with bananas, don't got stamina to waste. That banana stamina rhyme scheme was fire. Best of dinner speeding bullet when it bled, who won a race? Make a lace and nigga boots. Quick to put you in your place like he's selling real estate. Let me demonstrate okay. the triple That's chrome tough. chest plate too thick to penetrate. That's tough. Put you in your place, put you in a new home like real estate. That's fire. Purple suit and do they best to imitate. Today we done on turtle suit. Don't forget your dinner plate. Uh, Somebody <laughs> call him. Hey, he picked back up the lyricism on this song. My samurai blade more faster. Master swordsman style disaster. Smile on his face Master with a around six getting crazy. Laughter. No east bar is torture like a compound fracture. April O'Neil's is getting killed when I catch you on the rail. Oh, Ah, uh, Shredder Toxin, man. He was just in love a couple songs ago. Still sharp and still, we on conversation with Rex. Diamond. Tie him on the rope and lay their bodies on the track. Super villain train to go. Catch a hobby with the men. Niggas is do a little. I'm just trying to state the facts. Been nice as VHS tapes and beta max. Known for my villainous ways and heinous sex. Got hey, that's more intricate rhyme with each bar playing to the next one. He started out talking about he don't mess with rats and then that played into the Stuart Little line. Stuart Little came out on VHS and that played into the VHS beta max line. And then on a different note, he also had that super villain training line and then was talking about the old classic tie the girl to the train tracks. That's different, dog. Niggas know the deal overkill. Leonardo blood got a spill. Judge and the jury, every slug got a pill. Full of prints on his chest. That's fire. He said judge and the jury, every slug got a pill. Like pill, let the gun shoot, and then appeals, appealing the court trial. And I'm judging the jury based saying you the executioner. That's fire, dog. Ill seven armor, but it's sold him in the field. Underneath the chrome mask is gold in my grill. Still uh -huh. that I hold to take your soul for the thrill. All right, here we go. We picking it back up now. I think he stepped the rapping back up. One, the lyricism was just a little bit more complex and it's been on the last two songs. It's been back on par with those first couple of songs. And then he was punching, punching on this one and a lot of these songs have had the more subtle clever double entendres he has some haymakers on this one that real estate line was tough but that judge and the jury every slug got a peel line that's different dog and then i rock with his beat too it had a grimier undertone to it sound like something that got lifted from a 90s cartoon and hey if the sample don't get you in the vintage feel the fact that this song had three verses <laughs> that'll definitely make you feel like you in the 90s but no all three of the verses was tough beat was tough good song man this is feudal japan Diamond. Hey, it's been a whole bunch of skits anyway, so why that couldn't just been at the end of the song, I don't really know. But this is Ten Can Assassin. Diamond. How much wood would a woodchuck chuck if a woodchuck could chuck wood? Why? Turn fake fans to believers like a beaver. I wouldn't give a damn if it could. A believers like beaver. God dang, everything a tongue twist. Believers like beavers. A little subtle wordplay right there, cause like believe, leave, leave it a beaver. I'm rocking. I'm tracking. Misunderstood. He's not a bad guy. Taught to never cry or shed tears when the rat die. Give sight to the blind when he right round. Ray Charles wearing dark shades in the nighttime. That's Open fire, dog. That's fire, man. This is more of that writing where one line compound on the other. He had that don't cry when a rat dies line that turned into a double entendre in the next line. It's kind of sick because he never mentioned Splinter directly, but the rat dying, that's a reference to Splinter. And then he's saying something like his bars give sight to the blind. Master Splinter is blind. And then talking about the wearing the shades in the club. That's more of that double entendre, kind of like an extended metaphor. But I think this was extra hard to pull off because he didn't directly mention Splinter. Come on, dog. He made a diss, but he wasn't in his right mind. In real life, he ain't never on that type time. Never. Trying to hide behind the mask like he fight crime. Boy, that shredder shit you dropped ain't nothing like mine. Ten can assassin that'll show up to your crib just for speaking to the kid like Chris Hansen. Ice in the show like the sunny <laughs> That's fire. <laughs> show up for speaking to the kid. He talking about he'll pull up on you if you talking about him. But then Chris Hansen to catch a predator dude. Ice in the show like the sunny wrist dancing. Uh. Poor Walker, I could build a brick mansion. Hi, man. Not from feudal Japan. This shit I'll do to a man is brutal funeral plans. I'll bury you and your friend. <laughs> Ooh, that rhyme scheme right there. He got a four syllable funeral plans rhyme scheme, but then he's using the first two syllables of that back to back. So in those last two lines, I think it was like two or three syllables out of it that didn't rhyme. And everything else is part of that rhyme scheme. 
crazy. Grim de la Grim, purple just dawn hat with the leather brim. Clip like lamb shots, play a long song, cause the shit never ends. I like that clip like lamb shots. Y'all know how lamb shots be looking when you tell them apart. He's saying they look like, damn, I don't even know the name of it. The little magazines that got the little ropes that keep all the bullets together. I don't know what it's called, but y'all know what I'm talking about. Uh, clever spins, plot twist, we set the trends. Yeah. Told Jesus to take the wheel, he wrecked the bins. Man, we get to the point where I think these individual songs are fire, but now we at the point where it's like the hole is bigger than the sum of the parts, where the fact that he got this extended metaphor where he's rapping from the perspective of Shredder and rapping about himself at the same time is impressive. But the fact that he's been doing it for this long, man, and that he can build a whole album off that concept, like it's impressive. And the fact that he does this regularly is crazy. Like I said earlier, this is a sequel to that Oroku Saki album, and he did it on there too, but the way that he's immersed himself in this concept is even doper on here, in my opinion. But as an individual song, I still think it's fire. Hey, I know I get the rap for being a string hater, which I am in a lot of times, but it's a way to pull off strings and not make it sound like it's the mid 2000s and you just handed me a CD at the gas station while you're wearing South Pole with a Sean John hat. Smooth beat with those strings and then you had a little keys under it. I think that little rat blind shade scheme was really different. The lyricism overall was tough, but especially that pocket he got into when he got into that you and your man funeral plan, that little rhyme scheme right there. Let's uh, keep it going with Uzi, or if Uzi is good, we going straight to Techno Drone. Wavy as a Perry Berry, both shoes stay wake and don't snooze. Play the game straight and you won't lose. On that fell of Pro Tools, I run through whole crews. That back to back two syllable don't snooze rhyme scheme is tough. If you're a lyricist, you're going to use a two syllable rhyme scheme, you got to have them going back to back. And if you pair it up right, it's going to give your flow a little stop start type feel, which I rock with. The silly carry tools, liquid white chicks, some Terry Crews. They watch my every move. Heavy on the pool, shade flashing, looking like he threw confetti on the jewels. Be the first dude to rob a bank on the moon. Low tough like the trying to get a steak with a spoon. <laughs> I like both those lines, man. The steak with a spoon and the first one to rob a bank in the moon. I like both of those. Bad boy, not mixing the loom. Hopefully not Diddy either. Zookeeper, let the ape in the room. A straight goon. Pray that's my ace boom. A room joy six, how it's late June. Man, he's been doing it all out with how he'll take a syllable from the rhyme at the end of the bar and use it as part of the internal. He's doing it right now with the little room part of the rhyme scheme. Hey, bros, fill it with the chrome mask going no way. I got the bull rig with a bomb. Another Doom reference. Come on, man. Run Corona left in the freeze. Let's make a beer run. Me coke. Come on, man. That's a reference to one beer from M of Doom's album. You need seven Dragon Balls to beat me. My bitch look like Chi Chi. Dread to run loose again. <laughs> Calling all cars. Push your favorite rapper to the test like Narwhal. Nah, Catch me in the mall. I'm copping like. <laughs> Hey, Narwar, I got to get that man an interview after that, man. That's tough. He had a little Narwar ad lib, too. <laughs> hey, that's one of my goals in life, man, to get a Narwar interview. I'm trying to have this man ask me about info that I ain't even know about myself. Brought a bubble jacket, you shopping at Walmart. Pushing a small cart, headed for self-checkout. I unzip the car, hard vest, and whip the checkout. Water's on the floor, everybody get the heck out. Robbing folks at Walmart is nasty work, because clearly we ain't got money like that, or else we'd be a public or Kroger. In the land of the lost, I own real estate. They tried to lock me away, and I still escape. But it's gonna look crazy because I just talked about how I'm not a string hater. <laughs> but I ain't really rock with the strings on here. This beat sounded a little dated to me. This song right here, just like a lot of these beats, was playing into that early 2000s era that I hate on the production. Just the production. I like the era a lot rap wise. I just think the production ain't age well. Whereas a lot of the other beats felt like modern takes on those type of beats. This just felt like they took a beat from that era, not even a great one, and then brought it and rapped over it. I like the spacey, ethereal vibe to it, but that's about it. But I can look past that because just the rapping was so dope on here. He started the verse on fire. The syllables, he had a lot of witty jabs in here. But then my second criticism is the way that he fleshed out the concept of this album and a lot of the other songs was so masterful, so well thought out, so creative, that in this song where he just kind of loosely referred to Shredder and only had maybe a few double entendres and only had like a few instances where he used that extended metaphor that shredder metaphor the fact that you had that contrast make this song seem a little less impressive like this song it had the name techno drone so maybe i was just spending a little bit too much but i feel like you could throw this song on any other mickey diamond album and maybe one bar feels out of place i think that's a light critique in the grand scheme of things but i think if the concept kind of tails off at the end i think it'll take away from this album which has been just phenomenal up to this point i mean low-key with how good this album has been so far 
he can hit the poopy the scoop and it still won't ruin the album. But that's me nitpicking. This is Hyperstone Heist. It sound like a wrestling thing or something. double L, E, R, C, on the hell. I'm like Nas to a peon, it ain't hard to tell. I make your blood pressure spike like the sign of hills. Life I make your blood pressure spike like designer heels. I think you're talking about them. Uh, man, what's them heels that got the spikes on it? I'm out to take a field trip to Fields, man. I'm slacking. Put your life on the line. It's like you signed a deal. Imagine Johnson with the Put your life on the line. It's like you signed a deal. <laughs> That's witty. He's making a reference to these folks. selling their life away with these little 360 deals. You niggas is saved by the bill like long for he's got my bill in this arc in the dark. Park the beast, park the lock in the lead. The whole bunch funky is Marky Mark. Man, the way he play with that R sound right there, and this first time he like sped up his flow on here, which make it that much more impactful. Pull strings on guitars that I swing like honky tonk yeah. off the charts. Never put the cart before the gift their horse or look in his mouth when he talk. Unless you want your soul licked in the outline and chalk. That's fire, man. He had a horse double on tundra where he played all three different phrases to get it from the horse's mouth, put the cart before the horse, and I guess this ain't really a phrase but in greek mythology when troy sent them the gift of a horse as like a little setup i don't know what got it in this man bro he rapping rapping spit his split a face the drum big as a dinner plate you gotta be a fool to think of jordan's whatever when the race and it damn sure ain't fun when the rabbit got the shotgun i'm chris <laughs> evans even select come on man the tortoise on the hairline playing to the rabbits got the gun line i'm chris evans even celebrities can catch a hot one Talking spicy over songs, interviews, and podcasts. You can try to fool the That's fire, man. But talking spicy on interviews and podcasts, the hot ones at the interview show, and then talking spicy, obviously, playing to the whole hot one scheme. Bullets out the rocket, Clyde Pass like Clyde Drexler. That's fire. Clyde Drexler played for the Rockets, and then his nickname was Glide, Glide by you. One take would get me what you grossing in the fiscal year. Bad luck with a brother. If one take get him what I'm grossing, he gonna be on the Forbes list. Guard your crib. Life's a gift. But I got cause to deal, hard to kill. Now what's your life like? Cause mine's is real. Hey man, I'm bipolar with the reactions, dog. I was just talking about how the fact that he wasn't playing too heavy in the concept took away from the song on the last song. He ain't really mentioned that concept on this song, and I don't care, dog. I'm telling you, man, this rapping is not regular, dog. He punches good enough where he can just have one punch and leave it there. But when he do the thing where he'll have a punch and then the next line play into that previous punch, and that'll be an entendre, dog, man. And just for him to pull that horse's mouth. Was that a triple entendre, quadruple entendre loud? Like it's nothing, man. Come on, dog. It's not regular, man. The whole song sounded grimy. He was rapping on this. I'm about to go fight for the Intercontinental Championship type beat. Whole song sound menacing. Every single bar just oozed violence off of it. <sighs> that might be the toughest song on his second half of the album. This is, they took Splinter. I had enough skits, dog. I ain't finna do another skit. Me without the mask, it's like milk without the cornflakes. A sword and a torn cape. Hardcore is a porn tape. This is what you get if the five syllable round scheme and he used part of it as an internal round. Ever war bait. So many foot soldiers in the place that make the floor shake. All right, now they're going to hit the foot clan with the Rico. My clan catch you on foot. You better be a good sprinter like Bruce Jenner or Orenthal James. We juice niggas. Come on. Then we toss you not. Come on, bro. <laughs> Come on, the way he punching out regular dog. Man, that pen is stamped after this album. That pen certified dog. He started with the you better be a sprinter like Bruce Jenner, cause you know Bruce slash Caitlyn Jenner once upon a time was famous for actually track and field. But then he weaved that into the juice punch, which is a double entendre because Bruce Jenner was juicing in the Olympics, juicing and doing steroids, and then OJ Simpson's nickname is the juice. Bro gotta relax. Dip the old rest, cut off his ear like you been go. Awesome crabs. <laughs> Finger pain with your blood if I cross Bang your back. Screaming in pain, line. Screamin in pain. snatch your hero out the sky, choke him with his own cape, toss him in the Boston crab until I hear his bones break. We bum rush the spot, all he heard was the door break. Purple North Face to the winner, turtle souffles for dinner, cause I'm to bleed with the limits, they kill Splinter, nigga. Oh, this tape is nuts, dog. The whole concept behind the album's coming back full circle. Now he get into kind of a narrative. Like, he had beef with Splinter the whole time, but this song, on top of the fact that it's just really grimy, whole bunch of savage imagery on it, it has this overarching narrative of shredding the Foot Clan, kicked down the door, took Splinter, tortured him, and then killed him at the end. But then he's so cold with the metaphors and the concepts, you can take 
hate pretty much every bar and it works as just general grimy gun talk or violence talk whatever you want to call it and then for him to be able to sprinkle in one crazy lyricism and then to that bruce jenner oj simpson line to be in there while he's doing everything else with the concept of the album for him to be able to pull that off dog he on another level man he finishing the album like he started it let's go ahead and close this thing out with shell shot uh, nba jam slam it to the glass break never go against a villain with a bad face commentate like Stephen a and this will be your last take beat it like it's real even if that ass fake everybody <laughs> see me dropping at a fast pace and wonder why you only as good as your last take sport basket cake i'm right. no superhero one false move reduce your health bar to zero that health bar line so cold because they're playing in the theme God got the laser like lupe fiasco when niggas say Hey man, I was singing his praise and comparing to Lupe Fiasco, but he done brought up a traumatic part of my life that I've been trying to block out, which is the fact that Lupe Fiasco dropped lasers in his prime. What an awful album. Good line though. Every day I saw fiends come through to get a tax bill for dirt cheap. You can look but don't reach. Though. I got the crowd snapping like a spoken word piece. Uh, Might start a riot I like, like Metal line. World Peace. Uh, I'll make the kind of beats that call. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. For the record, Metal World Peace ain't start that. That man was chilling, minding his biz. Somebody threw a bottle. I think he was in the right. He didn't deserve that suspension, dog. If anybody, it was Ben Wallace. He started the whole thing. Book a new trip. I might break the boom box out and start pop locking. Oh, yeah. <laughs> My B boy stand, Star Trek. I can make Leonard Nimoy dance. All right, I'm rocking with that song, but but I feel a little conflicted because I think they took Splinter would have been the best way to end this album. Like that would have been a cold Thanos type moment. You just ended with the villain winning. But I see what he was going for. This was kind of like the celebration after the album. I think there was nothing he could do narrative wise to push this concept any more forward. So this almost felt like the album version of the closing credit scene. But regardless of how I feel, the album should have ended. I do like this as an individual song for one this beat is a great switch up from a lot of the songs especially on the second half of the album more dope rapping and it almost had the vibe of all right the villain one now he's throwing an after party but overall man cl it's close dog it's close i'm about to say it. man this album special this is album special for sure. This is my album of the year so far. This is my third time having a different album of the year. But this one got some staying power to it. It might end the year like that. I think Mickey Diamond might have just pinned his magnum opus. This album just has so many things that it does in an elite way that even if he just used a couple of them, this album would be great. But for him to merge it all together, insane man for one the concept was executed to perfection dog we already talked about it but it's just this one big extended metaphor where most of the lines most of the songs you can take it as either mickey rapping about himself or rapping about shredder but it's at the same time the way that he constricted himself to the shredder theme where a good portion of the punches played into ninja turtles so like think how difficult it is when you have a scheme where you have multiple different lines that all reference the same thing and for him to do that for a whole album dog i mean it's something that he's done with other concepts but it's still insane every time he do it the concepts and narratives that he had on individual songs were great from the romeo juliet things and shredder loves april to him getting to drop on master splinter and handling business and then you got a straight up wild card with the song cartoon cartoons but then in the midst of that you got some incredible individual songs like the one i just mentioned tgri that's probably the best song i heard all year then what he did from a technical rapper's perspective the rhyme schemes were great from start to finish some of the rhyme schemes were just absurd and then extremely high level of punch and mickey is a back-to-back -back puncher anyways and he was back-to-back -back here but then he started mixing in double and triple entendres the way that he would take one punch and have it weave into another punch then you got extra layers of intricacies with all the doom references the vintage feel to the beats there was a couple of songs in the middle that was kind of a lull and didn't really push the narrative forward it's probably about two songs on here that aren't bad but you could probably do without and make for a little bit cleaner album but dog Mickey Diamonds really did it with this one. Look, I ain't finna jump out the window and commit to saying it, but this album sounding real classic-ish.